Recording in progress. We are reconvening out of closed session where there is nothing to report out. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Please stand for the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public presentations. This is the time for persons who wish to address the council on any matter not on this agenda and over which the council has jurisdiction. As such, a dialogue with the council or staff is not allowed under the Ralph Thomas Brown Act. Items requiring council actions not listed on this agenda may be placed on the next regular agenda for consideration if the council directs. Unless a finding is made by at least two thirds of the council that the item came up after the agenda was posted and is of an urgency nature requiring immediate action. Please limit comments to a maximum of three minutes. Any emails here? We will close public presentations. Is there anyone on the council who would like to remove an item from the consent calendar? I would. Item A, please. Item A. Oh, okay. Is there anyone in the. Was that matter that was called um, the appointment of Corporal Landry as interim police chief? No. Okay, I'd like to pull that to please. <laughs> Is there uh, then a motion to approve items one, two, three, five, six, and seven on the consent and nine? And nine. Sorry. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion carries five zero. <laughs> um, well, I would do this in order, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go to the council poll items first. So, item number eight. Um, I'm just, I want a little more clarification on what we're supporting here. It's, it's very vague as to what allows the property owners to do and allow them the property without giving a whole lot about what they're going to do to protect the property. Yeah. And I, I just have to finish too. I'd like to know. Where in our town this could happen, but where could they put it? I'd like to know the time limits. Um, when they say no impact camping, does that mean on a piece of property they can go out on the top? I mean, the picture means that it's like they can just go out on the property and camp anywhere. And I time, like I said, time limits. And um, as a city, if we can permit certain things or not, like the length of time. Um, what they have to do as far as the bodies and you know parking and and I don't think there's enough information and I almost feel like we're setting it up so the homeless that are sent to us uh, could be on an urban or a suburban whatever property and that gets them out of the town. But that's just fine. Okay. Well, I am who asked. Um, the city manager put this on here because um, it had to do, well, the request came from the um, support for the Great Railroad Trail and um, um, private property owners, but I cannot answer those questions. I mean, fully, and I just I cannot. Yeah. So um, we can just pull it. Is that, is that, can we do that? And get back to it at another another time. Yes. Now, would that make yeah. everyone more comfortable? Thank you. Uh, is everyone in agreement with that? That's fine. Do I need to do a vote? Consensus, uh, city manager. I think just a consensus that uh, it'll be brought back in. Okay. Thank you. And um, 
Did anyone in the public want to speak to that before I move on? Okay. Um, and now um, item number four, confirmation of appointment of Sergeant Landry. I sure love free painter street. Um, I just wanted to, to pull this off the consent calendar just because I thought it needed to be off the consent calendar. Um, Corporal Landry is a fantastic asset to our community. Uh, we really have enjoyed her. My daughter and my grandson went down to the bicycle safety rodeo that they had at the school a little while ago. It was Corporal Landry who was leading that with the kids. A um, lot of community involvement, which I really appreciate. Um, not that other officers aren't doing that as well, but it is tremendous. And we really appreciate her service to the community as an outstanding officer who's been with us in 2018, who graduated from the College of the Redwoods, who then got a promotion in 2021. And I noticed that I read the article about you that the North Coast Journal had um, as an example to her daughter. And I just think that's absolutely fantastic. And I just wanted to say she has earned this on her own merits by her own work at all times. The second thing I'd like to say is she's a woman and I love that because she's kicking butt. And so far I have not found any references to any other woman police chief in Humboldt County. So that is particularly notable. Um, and I again just thought it needed to be off the consent calendar because I think it's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak? I mean, full of risk. Yeah, they share this. Yes. Very, 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 any emails? Any... Okay. Um, then I think we can. Kevin, I'm sorry. Did you have your. No, I have. Oh, you did. Okay. It's very easy to do. Um, can I have a motion uh, to accept item four confirmation of appointment of Sergeant Laundry Landry to the interim police chief? Second. I have a motion and a second. Motion carries 5 0. We will move on to reports and staff communications. City manager and staff updates, page 62, and our package city manager. Thank you, Mayor Garns and members of the council. So uh, the uh, Eel River Trail project is uh, underway. The contractor is down at the site doing some clearance work. Uh, so we're happy to see that uh, the project is, is underway. Uh, for our water uh, capital improvement uh, project, uh, the uh, contractor uh, has kind of revised their uh, starting date uh, now uh, tentatively to January of 2025. Uh, so there will be no uh, major construction on that particular project uh, for the calendar year 2024. However, there will be some minor um, uh, we were relatively small work that Randy's working on with them to kind of get before the rainy season uh, is uh, upon us. Um, and uh, beyond that, the uh, staff has uh, submitted the uh, uh, reports for the council's consideration, and we're happy to answer any questions the council may have. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. Mayor Bookham? No questions. Something in the I was just wondering when we're going to look into the ballers. I had mentioned that maybe a while back. Um, yeah, it's it's on a to do list. Um, what we would need to do is is hire uh, an engineer um, to do um, uh, the site prelim, and so we could probably uh, get somebody on board uh, for that relatively quickly, uh, and uh, and move forward. <laughs> It'd be great to have those before one of the days of next year. Yes. But are we got um my best do this and I might not remember. Um are we gonna have the ballers that pull up from underground or are we gonna buy the movable ones? 
Um, I don't know. I, I suspect the ones that you pull up out of the ground are significantly more costly. Okay. Uh, you'd have to excavate yeah. significantly deeper, and then you also have utility conflicts associated with that. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so it would probably be significantly cheaper to do the ones that you would uh, carry on to site and install. Uh, and there, in, in the end, those might be the only uh, feasible options. But again, an engineer would have to look at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Wilson. Wilson. Are there any public member of the public that has a question? Oh, any emails? <laughs> okay, then I will say thank you for that report. Thank you, staff, for everything you've done. We appreciate you all. I'm really glad you're part of Rio And now we will move on to special calls. Number one, discuss possible ordinance change banning sale, the banning the sale, provision, or distribution of nitrous oxide within the city limits. Page 68 in our packets. City manager. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> Mayor Lawrence, members of the council. So this is just a uh, preliminary discussion as the council is aware to make any ordinance change is kind of a two-step process and ordinance would be introduced for a first reading and then uh, reintroduced for a second reading prior to adoption. Uh, this is simply a conversational item uh, for the council to consider. Um, there has been a, you know, a push and a request uh, from uh, our neighbors in Eureka to uh, have all of the governing bodies in Humboldt County consider uh, a nitrous oxide ban uh, for the sale of nitrous oxide within the various jurisdictions areas, including the county. Uh, and this follows a, a tragic May 22nd, 2024 fatal accident in which uh, nitrous oxide allegedly played a significant role in the uh, death of a pedestrian uh, in the city of Eureka. Um, so we are just simply, staff is uh, relaying the message and the request. I know that in Eureka, they uh, passed a resolution uh, to pursue this nitrous oxide ban. Uh, and so uh, the staff from Eureka is just following through the direction from uh, their governing body to, to see if the others would be interested in pursuing um, uh, this item. So attached uh, to the uh, agenda is the, the City of Eureka's draft ordinance, and that's as of July 29th of this year. Um, obviously, our ordinance would be considered by our own legal counsel, but would most likely largely be uh, a copy of, of the work of Eureka's ordinance. Uh, so there's no question that this substance is, is abused in the community. It does, however, have legitimate uses, uh, particularly medical uses for which there would be an exemption in Eureka's uh, ban. Uh, and that there are you know, other ways of using it legitimately, whipping cream, so on and so forth. Um, and so uh, one thing that's not clear to me in particular when I review the ordinance is what happens with online sales uh, where you know somebody's ordering this on Amazon or something along those lines, whether that would be uh, even possible to enforce a ban or, uh, or possible to enact a ban or the practicalities of actually enforcing a ban of that nature is uh, really beyond the scope of uh, of the city. So, uh, so certainly I think there are some uh, legitimate questions about it, but really this is ultimately, you know, placed before the council for the, the consideration of this council, whether this is something you would want to pursue or thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, can you speak to the problem in, in Rio Del? I was speak on it. Okay. So um, I have a conviction for uh, nitrous oxide DUI. Uh, I use like a hundred of them an hour for driving down the road in Rio Del. Uh, so it is an issue here. I'm no longer seeing the small little uh, cartridges that you see in whipped cream. They're selling giant, like bigger than that water bottle size tanks of it in our stores here locally. 
I'm finding them on the streets, out front of drug houses where kids could easily pick them up. And I don't even know how they get it out of there. But um, so it's, it is a problem here in Rio Dell. I think the safety of our youth, we're a small town with lots of kids out on bikes. I think that's something to take into consideration. Uh, I'm, I'm for the ban. Thank you. Are there any questions? I was just going to say, I got real sick of uh, the, the litter associated. I mean, even the tiny cartridges, like, that's what I, the most common litter I've ever seen down at the river, are just like these piles of these things. And I've seen the big ones with these, it's wild what, what people do. Um, as long as I can sell whipping cream on everything, <laughs> that that is important, but uh, but no, I do think anyway. No, in all seriousness, um, I I it's a problem there. Yeah. Councilman Wilson, I see it, it's a problem. The reason the only thing I run across is past with the little puppets, but they uh, if they're doing this bigger stuff, so that's scary. we need to tackle it. That's not where are they sell. Okay. Where? In Jay Lakers. The next one? Yeah. You need to look into it. Yeah. I'm all for it, especially the, the auto size ones that you're talking about yeah. on the streets. Okay. Is E and J selling the bigger ones or just the widows? Uh they've sold the smaller ones over the course of the years. Uh, just recently, have they started selling the canisters? Is is there an age limit right now? It's not illegal, but is there an age limit for somebody buying? I don't know off the top of my head. They're they're prohibited from selling anybody under the age of eighteen. They're prohibited from selling anybody under the age of eighteen. No, I agree. I've seen it all over town, and we need to do something about it. So it sounds like the consensus of the council that we um, investigate and develop an ordinance by staff and bring it back. And I would be curious about the online, you know, what you said about how does this impact purchasing online. I did see a hand raised. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Alice. That's all right. Um, so what's it? Is, is the problem with something the size of, of the canister sitting in front of Frank, is that an explosion? Is that what? The, the reason I ask is I was getting ready. I was on um, when I went heading south. I was getting off at the exit here in Riedel, and there was this tremendous explosion. I thought my tire blew out. But my tire was fine, and it was right along, it was on the back side of the Bellevue houses. Uh, yeah, the Bellevue houses. And um, I, I couldn't even imagine what it was. It was a huge explosion. And this was about three months ago. And I looked everywhere. I went up and down the streets. I just couldn't imagine what it was. And not till right now did I think of what it might, what it might have been. We've been having these explosions that people hear over the years before these large canisters of hydrogen for propagated. I've never heard of the canisters exploding. I'm sure it is a possibility. It's it's suppressed, but um, I don't know if the explosion you heard was from nitrous. Like people, rednecks make things all the time. Tannerite, yeah, right. all the yeah, you know that's. Uh, I just thought I'd mention it because it was it was so huge that I almost I, I just couldn't even imagine what it was. Yeah. And there was nothing wrong with my car. Yeah, I, it, and I and I just couldn't imagine what it was. It could have been a transformer because three months ago I was riding my bike. I'm out on Edwards. I'm coming up in front of my house. Yeah, in front of your house. And it was but and it was just about three months ago, I think. So it could have been that, but I don't know. But, uh, you are it. Oh, I'm first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't anywhere near. This one was all over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one was right. I was getting off on, a, on the exit. So 
and it would have been if it, it was coming from the trees, so I couldn't see exactly because there's times in backyards on the other side of the trees. But I couldn't even imagine what would be so strong. Well, are there any other comments? Any emails? Any questions? Yeah, that's right. I mean, oh, absolutely. I have to chime in on everything. Um, I actually did some research on the nitrous oxide stuff as the county was looking at possibly doing a nitrous oxide ban, and it is added on to their legislative platform that they want to uh, do some kind of ordinance or they're supportive of that. Um, the problem with the laws that they have on the books is there's no enforcement. There's They're supposed to take a log when they sell it to someone who is over 18. They're supposed to do a log and require identification and all these things. None of that's happening, of course. Um, and that's the problem. Who's going to enforce it and how much is it going to cost? Um, I think the principle of having a sales ban, even though you really can't do anything about online sales, um, I think that is a worthy principle to have for Rio Dell and for Humboldt County, that this is not an acceptable thing. Um, I wouldn't expect it to ban all access to it, but it could certainly help greatly. Um, and I know that other communities are looking at doing the exact same thing, so we wouldn't be an outlier, which would be nice. But um, it's definitely a county priority, and I had no idea until I started looking into this how huge of a problem it is. You just don't even know. Um, so I would encourage us to continue looking at it as it sounds like we're going to, and then we'll try to work through, as Eureka will and everywhere else, the issues with um, enforcement and all those various problems. Thank you. And uh, we will close that item and move on to item two, spay and neuter voucher program, page 72 in our packets. City manager. Thank you, uh, Mayor Garns, uh, members of the, the city council. Uh, <clears throat> city staff has uh, developed a proposal to utilize funds from uh, uh, our spay and neuter fund uh, to implement a spay and neuter voucher program uh, for Rio Del residents. Uh, the report will outline the program's details, including funding partnerships and operational procedures. Um, so uh, the spay and neuter fund uh, was historically funded through the animal license and control fees. Uh, however, recently it has relied solely on interest earned on city investments. Uh, the current balance is about $3,400. Uh, staff proposes to reestablish funding through the animal license and control fees, uh, anticipating annual contributions of approximately $2,500. Uh, based on uh, our recent historical averages. Um, so uh, previously, I, I believe the city used to hold spay and neuter clinics uh, back in the day. Uh, those have, have ceased to occur. Uh, so the spay and neuter uh, voucher program, the new one, uh, aims to reduce uh, the pet population in Rio Del by providing financial assistance to residents for sterilizing other animals, with the idea being that uh, you know, our focus has been on animal care. Uh, uh, once animals are taken into custody uh, of the city, and so we have a contract with Miranda's Rescue uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, this program uh, will be coordinated with the Rio Del Community Resource Center uh, to distribute the vouchers to those in need uh, here in Rio Del. So the program will partner with the Rio Del Community Resources Center to distribute spay and neuter vouchers to residents, vouchers can be redeemed at Critters Without Litters, set up through the nonprofit Humble Humane Program offering low-cost sterilization services uh, at their Fern Bridge at, at Drive address. Uh, the city would directly reimburse Critters Without Litters for voucher redemptions uh, up to the maximum allocated amount, currently $3,400. Uh, voucher values vary uh, by animal type and size uh, and based on the capacity of critters without litters uh, to uh, conduct these operations. So the cost would range from $75 for male cats to up to $350 for, for female dogs. Again, 65 pound weight limit because they don't have the equipment to operate on dogs. So over that weight range at this point in time. Uh, 
Uh, so Curtis about letters is open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Monday through Thursday, and can typically accommodate up to 35 procedures daily. Uh, so the program we utilize the $3,400 balance currently in, uh, in the uh, span and neuter fund and rely on approximately $2,500 annual revenue to continue uh, this program. Uh, obviously, the more animals that we get licensed and revenue in to this program, the more we can work on the upstream problem of pet overpopulation, of pet, uh, you know, uh, people not taking care of pets because they have too many of them. Uh, and so uh, the number of vouchers issued obviously will be determined by available funding and we could report back to the council on kind of this initial tranche of $3,400, how effective it was, how many cats versus dogs, that sort of thing. Uh, so staff is uh, recommending that the council approve uh, implementing the spay and neuter voucher program outlined in this report. Uh, the program will help reduce the pet population address related issues uh, contributing to the community's overall well-being. And I do want to specifically point out uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Carter, who's been uh, in advocacy and pushing for this and helping to coordinate with uh, Critters Without Litters, the humane group uh, for this uh, for this program. So with that, I'll return it back to you. Thank you very much. Good. You know I got something to say. <laughs> um, I really just want to say that this is such a big deal because it is so different than, than how municipalities have historically handled stuff. Um, I do believe that animal shelters are important and necessary, but I also think that they are kind of a band-aid solution and not a long-term solution. Um, and, and I think that if we can get in as a city and said, so, you know, I mean, I know we contract with an animal shelter, but I think that um, providing financial assistance for spaying and neutering pets instead of just taking them to a shelter is going to be a major boon to our community and what I hope to be an example um, that, that Rio Dell did first, you know, that, that worked wonderfully and um, that we can then be an example for other surrounding communities that maybe want to do the same thing because it really is a way more viable long-term solution to help people spay and neuter their pets than it is to simply take them to the shelter and hope for the best. Um, and like I said, shelters are important and necessary, but it's a band-aid solution, and this is an actual long-term solution. Um, Sarah Reback at our Community Resource Center has a very, very deep and thorough knowledge of the members of this community, and I think that she will do a fantastic job of making sure that these vouchers get into the hands of the people who actually need them and not the hands of people who are simply lazy and don't feel like it, right? Um, and there is a great need in this town. Anybody who's ever had a garden in Rio Del knows how great it is to have full feral cat poop. Um, so I just, I, I really, I think it's important for the animals and I think it's also important for the city because we're gonna do this first and, and be an example to surrounding communities of a city who try to solve the problem instead of just banning it. So I am very proud of us for this. I think this is gonna be great. And I look forward to um, running fundraising activities for this kind of stuff, telling my family that's I want for Christmas them to donate to our fund, things like this. We're gonna get more than $2,500 a year in that fund. That's me, thank you. I can go Thank you, Alice. And I just want to thank you have been in the spay neuter voucher program for yeah. so long. And it's because of people like you that I have worked with in the past that I have looked up to, and you have helped me. And um, I, I think it's really important for a city and a municipality to kind of step up and, and try to help the problem. So thank you. What I wanted to do first, but COVID interrupted, yes, was to have a not a spaying your ordinance, but a no breeding ordinance. A no breeding ordinance because it was a matter of health and safety to have dogs unfixed on the streets. Um, you don't want to interfere when they got breeding on the brain. You don't want to interfere with their plans. And so it's a good <laughs> and well, so it is a matter of health and safety to the to to kids and other and other dogs and cats and 
something else. But um, that was the plan. But then, then COVID happened and we all got sidetracked. We couldn't have a meeting. We were going to have a meeting. Um, and Mary, I think, was Mary and the former chief, the one uh, 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 is, is now in Arcata, um, or or at the university. But that's what our plan was. And then after that, it would, and the plan was to show everybody, we are the first. Look, look how we got, we got our proverbial something together. And we've, we've been able to do this and then spay and neuter the vouchers would come naturally. Um, and everybody would want to do that if they needed to get everything fixed well. No problem um, if we can come up with some help with cost because it was so expensive. But now thanks to Humboldt Humane. Yes. And yeah, uh, and the two clinics there on Myrtle Avenue and the one in Burbage. Between those two, I mean, we can do it. Well, and I'll also say we finally don't have to drive all the way to Myrtle Town. For the, this part of yeah. the River Valley, it's very important and, and a very big deal that we have our own little spay neuter clinic here. And, and look, I could hijack this meeting. Right. I'm not going to. Alice, thank you so much sure. for but being here to support. One more thing, and that is the landlords. Landlords have got to quit saying no pets, no pets, no pets. If we could do something to encourage landlords to say, if your pets are fixed, they are good citizens, probably better than your kids. <laughs> and they should be within, within reason accepted into, into housing. That's a big problem. You don't think it's a big problem, but it is a big problem. We got to get coffee sometime. Else. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Alice. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, despite removing cat food from the neighborhood, taking away 50% of my dog's diet, um, I'm all for this. Huh? <laughs> 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 Yeah, I can close that. Councilmember Wilson. Just a question. It said that one time the the fund relied on license fees for this. Did that go away for some reason? It's, it says the only way it's funded now is through increments. But at, at one point it was it was funded through license fees, and now we're going back to fund through the license fees. Well, yes. stop it. I, I think it ended up getting rolled into the general fund, and part of that was, uh, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but to help offset the costs for the contract with Miranda's Rescue for animal care, um, which the city spends either twelve or $1,900 a month for that particular uh, contract, which is fairly expensive. Um, so it has helped offset that cost. But, are we, uh, we're still doing the contract with yeah. Brian, but yeah. All right, I want clarification. I, I'm, I'm for, I know that I, I know I see a lot of stuff with animals on the be even an issue. Um, so we, if we could reduce it, this will reduce it, you know, that would be good. Okay, and um, I agree. I think that it should be. I think also that, and this will be coming up very soon, we should start enforcing our laws, our ordinances regarding dogs. We should find the people whose dogs are loose, but that's going to all come up soon. Not today's topic. <laughs> um, but I think we can fund this with other by other means too that are already on the books that if we just do it we could be funding things so anyway i am absolutely 100 percent and behind this um do we need to take, do a vote to approve the span neuter city manager uh yes so the recommended action would be to approve the program that's proposed uh or uh, the council would like to add modifications uh, for staff to incorporate. And then again, I'll 
Page 74 is an example of the uh, application for the stated reduction. Thank you. Are there any modifications anyone feels are necessary at this time? Then is there a motion to approve? I would love to make that motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion carries 5 0. On to ordinances. Second reading by title only and adoption of ordinance number 405 2024, amending the Rio Del Municipal Code to amend chapter 15.05, construction codes to establish construction activity, noise regulations, and chapter 2.60, planning commission regulations of the Rio Del Municipal Code to elect the chair and vice chair on a biannual basis. Page 75 in our packets. Thank you, Mayor Garns, members of the council. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to our community development director, if we have a call. I'm Mayor Garns, members of the council. This item was initially presented at your August 6th meeting. Um, as you indicated, there's actually two components of this ordinance. Um, one has to do with construction noise, the other has to do with a minor amendment to the appointment of the chair and the vice chair of the planning commission. The discussion at the August 6th meeting revolved around the construction noise recommendations. It was brought up and suggested that we may be too limiting on the recommendation. Uh, the original recommendation was from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. And it was brought up that many homeowners who work till five may have projects ongoing and would need more time to work on those projects. Based on that discussion, staff actually recommended that the construction hours be from 7 a.m. to dusk, seven days a week, Monday through Sunday, and that was generally supported by the council. Um, are we doing some other jurisdictions, um, ordinances regarding construction noise? Uh, I could not find one jurisdiction that actually referred to dusk. And the dusk reference may be subjective and difficult to enforce if necessary. So we actually came up with a couple different options, um, basically in this, along the same lines of the council's direction. Um, option one, and they're on page 76 of your packet, at the bottom, option one would be 7 to 8 p.m., seven days a week, Monday through Sunday. Option two identified is 7 to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturdays, Sundays and holidays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Of course, these are just recommendations. Again, we believe staff believe that option number one was close to reflect what the council discussed at the August 6th meeting. Um, with that, uh, I will answer any questions, open any discussions and put it in the hands of council. Thank you. Council Member Woodall. Oh, on the one that says 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week, Monday through Sunday, you know what's strange about it, how do you know it's the same time? Somebody in the summertime is going to think 8 is not the right time. It's still light. It doesn't get dark until 9. But 8 o'clock in the wintertime, it gets dark at 4. I don't know, I might be aggravated at somebody. I mean, that's just my feeling on that. Um, let's see. You can't do it by, you can't have two different times for when it's getting dark later. That's actually, actually, like yeah, okay. actually up to the council. If the council would like to do that, we could maybe break it down during daylight savings periods and non daylight savings period. Um, and I didn't know off the top of my head when daylight savings starts. Is it June 22nd? Is that June 22nd? Is that June 22nd? But that's certainly not. Right. I mean, that's just me. And all that. That's just my thought. Um, that's good thought. Oh, that's all I have. Okay. Okay. Um, I, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I do think, oh, I'm just going to split hairs. Um, I think that option one is more simple, less confusing. So there's that. But either way, I, I agree. 8 p.m. feels later in the winter. And then I, I should point out that uh, the only time we hear complaints is typically when we've got a larger problem. It's not when your next door neighbor is doing something. The latest complaint we got had to do with the PG&E and the underground and the utility lines, where apparently a couple of days they actually started before 7 a.m. And that generated a couple of phone calls. 
And so it's not something we come across or right. all. I'm okay with breaking it down too. I just wasn't sure if it'd be way more difficult to enforce or if it just confuse people. But yeah, whatever. That's my thought. Um, yeah, I actually want to say I appreciate the work you did on this. Um, and either option is great for me. I think breaking it down by daylight savings gets a little convoluted because it's, it seems um, a little too much. It's getting dark at 4 30. That doesn't mean you're going to bed at 4 30 just because it's right. getting dark earlier. So. And most people, once it gets started, there, unless it is a bigger project, aren't going to work in the dark. Um, so I think just uh, the, the first one works. If you want the Sunday later start or a day of rest or whatever, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, I would stick with one of those two. And again, thank you for working on that. That's over Wilson. I'm good with the multiplication. Okay. You, you, you have a one in you want, particular? You want, I mean, I'm just asking. You want, no, no, I just didn't know if you, there was one or the other in the oh. or breaking it up into whichever I whichever works better for the city. I you know, you, let's I don't want to make it into something that's not by making it too complicated. Um, <laughs> um and I wasn't here, I I, I kind of I would probably throw Sunday and holidays out completely because I don't want anyone banging on things on Sundays and holidays, but that's just me. Um, I do understand um, what Councilmember was all saying, um, but I, I do. I believe that people probably will stop when it gets dark, but that doesn't mean they will. They can just put up a big light and keep going. Um, so, I mean, I'm willing to discuss that because I I don't. Think people are stupid, so I think that people can understand if you say these are your regulations. Someone complains, when you explain the regulations, they should be able to, to work with it. But you know, that's that's just me. I think I, I don't think an extra sentence is gonna like blow people's minds and they can't do it. They can't do it because there's an extra sentence saying, you know, in daylight saving time, you can't. Do we know what times these people were complaining about? It sounds like it was morning time. Morning? Like early morning. Yeah. 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 People were shocked yeah. 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 That's yeah. what yeah. yeah. they most. Yeah. yeah, apparently they were actually starting activities at 6 30. They had to touch. And that's, that's pretty darn early. Yeah. Um, anyone um, in public want to make a comment on this? Yes, I thought I'm here. You knew I would. It's definitely better than it was. Thank you for the work that you've done on that. Um, and between the two options on the hours, either or, you really, um, there's no objection to having Sunday or holidays have a little bit of a reduced hours. That's pretty common for sound ordinances. Um, the only issue I would have with it is um, we don't get a lot of complaints right now because there isn't a, a sound ordinance. If neighbors were having a fight, this will give them an opportunity to bug the heck out of each other. Um, especially where it says no construction activity. Construction activity shall include any physical activity, including those identified, on the property with it outside of those time limits. So a reasonable person would be fine with this. An unreasonable person in a neighbor fight is going to have a little bit of room. Um, I did a little bit of looking on different noise ordinances, and I found one I really liked out of the city of Galt that had some good language. Yeah. I could this a little bit easier, um, for an exemption because projects don't end on time. Anybody who's done a project knows they rarely end on time. So they have a, they have a different approach. They have a noise ordinance for Galt, and then they have exemptions from the noise ordinance for construction noise, which I thought was an interesting approach. Um, so they have and their their hours are different. They're defining it as six a.m. to eight p.m. For their area. But the part that I like that I highlighted on the handout is the exemption. It says, provided, however, when an unforeseen or unavoidable condition occurs during a construction project and the nature of the project necessitates that work in progress be continued until a specified phase is completed, the contractor or owner shall be allowed to continue work after 8 p.m. and to operate machinery and equipment necessary until completion of the specific work in progress can be brought to conclusion under conditions which will not jeopardize inspection acceptance or create undue financial hardships for the contractor or the owner. 
So there's a little bit of a wiggle room if 8 p.m. comes and you're still in the middle of doing whatever you're doing. Um, they also had an interesting one. They have an exemption specifically for pouring concrete during the hot months that starts at 5 a.m. If you want to move to Galt, you should probably know that. Um, and, but then the other language they had for maintenance to residential properties, I kind of like because it was just, you know, it's an exemption to the noise ordinance. Noise sources associated with maintenance to residential area property, provided that activities take place between the hours of, and then they have their hours. That is just a straight up exemption. Noise associated with maintenance to residential area property, provided it's within that time period. That also can help avoid some neighbor fights. But anyway, it's much better than it was. Thank you. Does anyone want to take that? Mayor, I'm, I'm yeah. at, um, if the council members would turn to page 77, just about the middle of the page, subsection 3A. We do have an exception. Um, it is it says emergency work performed pursuant to written, written authorization by the city manager, many developed director or the building official. So if there are situations that do occur, um, we could actually handle that through that language here. I do like some of the language you suggested um, regarding regular maintenance. I think they're probably talking about lawnmowers um, at the turn of that type of stuff. We could either revisit that, bring it back, or we could adopt it as it is, whatever your council decides. <laughs> I'm fine with that. So it's, again, with the daylight savings thing, I, I caution against it because someday we have to get our heads out of our and get rid of daylight savings <laughs> tonight, and then we'll be back here again. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. Alex. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I, um, I'm about option two. That's my line. My So uh, I don't know how to uh, defend it. I don't know how to ask that option without making the motion myself. Can how would I phrase the uh, which one we want to do? Well, one of the council members may make a motion to uh, uh, one or two. to adopt either option one or two, and then we can vote on it. Um, knowing that there's maybe some division amongst the council, it happens all the time, it's not a big deal. Uh, and uh, so whoever wants to make a motion first. I move to approve or adopt ordinance 405 2024, amending the municipal code with option two. Second. We have a motion and a second. The vote. Motion carries five zero. Move on to item two, second reading by title only and adoption of ordinance number 406 2024, amending chapter 13.10, sewer rates and regulations, section 13.10.170, 13.10.170. And 13.10.467 of the Rio Del Municipal Code. And J4 and our packets, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor Garner, members of the Council. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to our wastewater superintendent, Ms. Sunshine. Good evening, Mayor Garden and members of the City Council. As provided in the Council meeting of July 16th, the Chair staff presented a need for clarifying language in the City of Rio Dale's Municipal Code Chapter 1310, Sewer Rates and Regulations. Presented on August 6th was the first reading by Title Only Ordinance Number 406-2024, amending Chapter 13.10, Sewer Rates and Regulations. The council opened for public hearing and deliberated with consideration of approval and adoption for tonight's meeting after the second reading by title only ordinance number 406-2024, amending chapter 13.10, sewer rate and regulation sections 13.10.170, 13.10.270. Page 84 of your packet tonight. I'm eager to answer any questions and council may not at this time. Council Member Woodall? Yes. 
Council Member Wilson? No. Mayor Broca? No questions. Council Member Orr? No questions. Anyone in the public? Any emails? Protect the boundaries. Then I was hoping we are ready for voting their motion to approve the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 4062024. So much. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion in the second. We vote. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you very much. And now we come to council reports and communications. Mayor Potem. Thank you. I, um, since our last meeting, attended a school board meeting and a fire district meeting. They were wrapping up on wild days. They did pretty well. They, you know, had a good fundraiser. So, um, good for them. Um, and tomorrow we have a nuisance advisory committee meeting right here in the council chambers at 3 p.m. And I think I will see you all before any of my next meeting. So I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <laughs> Council Member Orr. Take whatever you call me. <laughs> HCOP meeting last week. A uh, couple things I wanted to pass on. The Regional Climate Action Plan is now live on their site, um, the HCOP site. Uh, September 30th through October 6th is the week without driving. I help us think about those who can't drive, can't afford to drive, or unable to drive. Uh, September 21st and 22nd, the Arcade Affair, I believe it was, the HTA, the Ride Humboldt campaign is kicking off, and uh, the Transit Authority is going through a fair change right now. It's not so much about increasing, from what I understand, as it is about kind of making it a little bit easier to understand and work with. Uh, if you have any questions on that, the HTA.org in the news column, it shows the new fare structure. And last, um, the hydrogen bus that we are getting should, is expected in December. It will run down to Mendocino and back. Um, it's the first of its kind in the U.S., and they're very anxious to see how it works out here. Thank you. That's more for Wilson. Oh, I'll just serve the first CEA meeting Thursday. Good morning. Hey, that's more what all. I was wondering if on the next. Agenda we could put from the walk be the kitchen walkability committee. We need we we looked at doing something in the triangle park. And I don't know if Jenny actually thought that I said we have to bring it before us first. She's not doing anything we can bring that. Not be okay, but we need to bring that before you because it's from our committee. So if I can get that on the next consensus, consensus, I don't agree. And yes, and it's just that she's the one, God bless her, that takes care of. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it takes her a lot of time. And so she came to us and asked if she could make a few different changes that will alleviate some of the work for her. And she said, "That's why she's not going to do it." Oh, God, we need her to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's it. All right. Thank you. And I am. Um, well. You, you gave away all the HTA. <laughs> 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 no, I meant the HTA. Yeah, the HTA yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, um, HCOG on last week appointed me as to the Great Redwood Trail Board. Thank you for the nomination. Councilmember Orr uh, nominated me, and the board, uh, the um, HCOG board approved the appointment. So now Ray Odell is at the table. So that's really great. Really good. And I appreciate that. On the 29th, I will be uh, manning the table at the uh, fair for the uh, some Redwood Coast Tsunami Work Group. And we will have information on tsunamis and, and uh, earthquake safety. Not, you know, not, not, not directly about them. But um, how things work and what you should do to keep yourselves and your families safe. And I think that that is about all that I have to put out. Today. So, our motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn, and there's, I'm sure there's a second somewhere in there. Yes. <laughs> we have a motion to have a second. We will um, adjourn until September 3rd at 6 p.m.